Hey y'all, well it's story time in regards to that video I posted this morning of my husband and his mistress at the Atlanta airport. So, let me just preface this by saying, I'm a nice person, I'm a sweet person. I'll do anything for my family and my friends. And I'll help anybody out. I try to stay in my own lane. I try not to bother anyone or do any of that. But when people play in my face and plot and plan and do foul stuff, I'm not so nice anymore. And that's how most of us are. So let me start by saying on October 29th of 2022, my husband was scheduled to come home from a trip from Europe. He told me he had been over there working and he worked a lot for his, you know, his corporate job. I thought he was working anyway. Um, told me he had a speaking engagement in Europe. So I um, uh, wanted to make sure that I had dinner and everything ready for him um, by the time he got home. So I called the airline. So I knew the flight number and I was driving. So I couldn't, um, you know, type it in my computer because usually if you just type a flight number in, it'll just pop up what time the flight's gonna land. So I had to call the airline that day. And when I asked the flight attendant, or not the flight attendant, I'm sorry, but the um, you know the representative, um, what time that flight came in, he asked me for, he asked for my husband's name. And I was like, you don't need his name. I was like, just give me the flight information. You know, if I typed it in, it, I just need the flight information. You don't need his name. So he was adamant about me giving the name. So I gave him the name. He comes back a few minutes later and he says, Mr. Such and Such and Miss What's Her Name landed 20 minutes ago. So I'm in shock because I've been married 25, 26 years and I'm thinking I'm just married to this outstanding, upstanding citizen. So I said, no, just his name. I don't, I don't know who that other person is, but just his name. And the guy states again, he was like, Mr. Such and Such and Miss What's Her Name just landed a few minutes ago, like 20 minutes ago. So I'm sitting in the Kroger parking lot like, like, what does this mean? I'm still kind of, I'm in a state of shock actually. So my head is spinning by this time. My blood pressure's gone up and I'm like, what does this mean? So I'm like, mm, okay. So right after that, my husband calls and I was trying to hold it in and trying to hold what I was feeling in. So I was like, I'm not gonna say anything right now. I'm going to wait till he gets to the house because he was like, oh, I missed you. It's been a long, long week. This is the hardest money I ever earned, but I wish you could have gone with me. And I was like, okay, well, you know, you can tell me about your trip when you get home. So, okay, stand by y'all for the rest. So, okay, y'all. So when he comes home, I greet him at the door, you know, give him a hug and a kiss and ask him about his trip while he's unpacking. And um, so I'm like, show me some pictures from your trip. And he was like, oh, I didn't take any pictures. You know, I was running around working and we were just so busy and on the go. We were just, you know, just going to and fro. So I was like, oh, okay. So we go to have dinner. I was like, hey, I called the airlines um, to see what time your flight was getting in. And I said, they told me there was someone else on your itinerary. And I tell him the person's name. And he was like, who was that? And I was like, I don't know. You tell me. He was like, oh, I don't know who that is. And he was like, mm -mm. he said, they must have made a mistake. So I was like, well, okay. Like, so I went along with it, but something about it, my spirit just was not feeling right. So I was like, something about this is just not right. So that night when we go to bed, he's sleeping over there just a snoring. I'm over there tossing and turning because I was like, something about this just does not feel right. So something tells me in the morning when you get up, go check your credit card bills that are on the counter. So the credit card bills are all stacked up out on our kitchen counter and I don't open them because I don't pay the bill. I mean, it's American Express bill each month. They be high. So I was like, I ain't got nothing on it. So no need for me to open them. But I, that was my account and I added him to it years ago and I just let him open it, you know, open the bill um, and pay it. And there was sometimes I would open it, but most times I would just look at my portion of it and just keep it moving. So that morning when I get up, I go to church and he tells me that he had to um, leave because he had to catch up on work and all that kind of stuff later on in the day. So I was like, okay. So I go to church and, and when I come back from church, I get ready to go to the Falcon game. But something was like, check one of those credit card bills before you go. When I open up that bill, the woman that the airline employee mentioned that was on his itinerary, her name was up and down my credit card bill. 
flights here, flights there, flights to Paris, Delta vacations, um, you know, a country here, an island there. So I'm thinking, this was in one month. So I'm sitting there like, what in the world? So by this time, y'all, I'm steaming. And I got to go to this Falcon game with my girlfriends and try to act like I'm having a good time. But the whole time, my mind is racing. So I was like, okay. So I come home that night. I stack up all those bills. I got bills for like eight months worth of bills. Actually, that was October. So 10 months. I pulled from December of 21 to October of 22. And when I tell you, it was very telling. This woman's name was on every one of my bills for each of those months, several times. So while I thought he was out working and telling me that I couldn't travel with him because, you know, he didn't want to get distracted. Oh, he had a travel mate. All right. He had one. Stand by for part three. So I go through all these credit card bills, finds this girl's name for months on my credit card bills for the last 10 months specifically. Um, so at that time I reach out, I try to call his phone, call my husband's phone and text him. No answer, no text back. So I call his boy's house because he told me he was going to his boy's house to watch um, football. No answer from him. So I text him and was like, hey, um, is he with you? No answer back. Then all of a sudden, here come my phone ringing. It's my husband. Like, oh, I ran out to get something to eat. Like, what's up? And I was like, oh, you know what's up? I said, and I started repeating the girl's name. And he was like, why you keep saying that name? And I was like, I kept saying the name. So he was like, well, I don't understand why you keep calling that name. And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, your gig is up. I was like, you nasty motherfucker. I was like, your gig is up. So he was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm on my way home. I'm on my way home. I was like... Bring your ass on home. I was like, come home. Because by this time, I'm furious. So I hang up the phone. I'm just like, live it, y'all. I promise you. I think my blood pressure was on like a 1,000 that day. So he comes in. And he come in like all Billy Bad. Like, why you keep mentioning that name? And I was like, you tell me why I keep mentioning that name. So I was like, I'm going to ask you this. I said, I'm going to ask you one time. I said, no, I know the truth. I was like, was such and such on this flight with you? He was like, no, I don't know why you keep mentioning that name. I don't know who that is. I said, I'm going to ask you one more motherfucking time and know that I know the truth. Don't lie to me. And it was like this mask fell off of him. And he sat down in his chair and he was like, yeah, she was with me. And I was like, okay. I said, so that's your girlfriend? He was like, yeah. Yeah. I said, well, how long you been with her? He said, a couple of years. And I was like, okay. So by this time, I can't hold it together. I mean, I think I, all I remember doing, I remember crying, and I had a really, really bad headache. And all he said to me was, and this is what he, what he says was really kind of like cut me. He was like, like he was relieved. He was like, at least I ain't got to lie no more. I'm sorry I hurt you, but at least I don't have to lie anymore. So by this time, I'm like, say what now? So I'm screaming. I'm yelling. My son's upstairs. He comes down, goes back up because I was like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. But my head is like hurting like really, really bad, guys. So I come back to my, my, my bathroom to try to get some, some medicine. So I was like, let me take my blood pressure. Blood pressure was like one, like 190 over 110 or some crazy shit like that. So I was like, let me, I, I got to get to a hospital. I got to get to a hospital. So stand by. It gets more interesting. So by this time, my head is banging and I know I need to go to the hospital. I know something is wrong. So of course I'm crying. I'm hysterical, trying to put my clothes on. He's trying to touch me and pet me up like, oh, oh, I'm just so sorry that I made you feel this way. Now, didn't really have any compassion in his voice, any of that kind of stuff. So I was like, don't touch me. So I drive myself to the airport. He was like, I'll drive you. I was like, mm -mm. I said, I'll take my chances. I drive myself to the airport. I get there. Blood pressure is off the charts to the point they're like, ma'am, you're about to have a stroke. You got to calm down. And I really couldn't even talk. So they were like, "We, you got to calm down. So they call my doctor. We get the medicine. They try to get it under control. So I'm there for a couple of hours. So I come home and he's sitting on the couch eating Cheetos. Like, ain't shit happen, right? And it comes in like, oh, what they say? And I was like, they said, take, they got the, got my pressure, you know, kind of down because it went all the way down. It's like, go see a doctor in the morning. 
So that night, I could not sleep. I cried all night long to the point when I got up that morning, I really couldn't even see. My eyes were so swollen. So I'm, t I'm tore up, right? So I go out later that morning. He's he's uh, upstairs. I come upstairs because I slept in another bedroom. He's around here like, you know, like, doo -doo -doo. like you know, he having a good day and shit. Like, you know, his, his, his burdens is light. Mine heavy, but his is light. So, um... I come up and then he's out in our family room and I was like, look, I said, I don't know. And I'm still in a state of confusion. So I was like, I don't know what happened last night. And I was like, I don't know what I've done wrong. Cause by this time I'm blaming myself. I was like, you know, I know I'm getting older, you know, but I try to keep myself up. You know, I try to look, you know, look nice, you know, do whatever I can as a wife. I was like, you know, I've tried my best. So I don't even know what I could have done or what I can do. So I'm taking the blame. And he was like, oh, it's it's not you. Like, it's not you. So, um, but I'm like, no, like, it's got to be me. He was like, not, like no, you. he's like, you're a good wife. You know, you've been a really good wife. So I was like, well, I'll tell you what. I was like, I, I'm confused here. I say, like, so what we need to do, I was like, I think we need to sell the house. Let's move away. Try to start over. You go to counseling. I go to counseling. We do some counseling. And we, you know, we start over. So he was kind of like real smug with it. Like, well, if that's, that's what you want, like, yeah, we can do that. So I was like, well, what about her? Are you going to stop seeing her? So he paused for like 20 seconds and kind of tilted his head to the side. He was like, I ain't going to tell you I'm going to stop seeing her. And I was like, then you want a divorce? He was like, oh, I don't want a divorce. He was like, I ain't going to let nobody fuck up my money. And I was blown away y'all when he hit me with the I don't want a divorce but I'm gonna keep seeing her because I ain't gonna let nobody fuck up my money let me tell you something that was definitely the wrong answer and told me everything I needed to know about him about the marriage and what I needed to do next so for the next couple of days I, you know I'm still in a state of confusion and I remember Going to once I found the girl's name, I went to Instagram, good old Instagram. You know, you go go look there, you find anything. So I look up her name, I see her, and I'm really like feeling down. I'm like, oh my God, like she's beautiful. You know, he wants him someone younger, like I ain't all that. Da, da, da. So I'm just tearing my ass up. So, you know, my girls called later that day, my best friend called that morning and he was checking in on me and I was trying to hide it from her, but I couldn't. So I'm like in a ball of tears, tell her what's happened. She's in a state of shock. And usually she always got something to say, but she was left speechless. So she calls my other girlfriend. Um, she calls. We all in a state of shock. Everybody's tore to pieces. So that day, um, after, you know, I tell them what, what happened and everything, everybody, we just call it. We all were shocked. So the next day I go and meet with them because I see this girl um, on Instagram and I'm telling them about it. So they asked me to come out to lunch, have lunch with them, my two girlfriends. So because they needed to tell me something. So and I bring it up. I was like, well, I see her pictures on Instagram. And I was like, she's pretty. And they were like, girl, she ain't all that damn pretty. Like that's filters and plastic surgeon, a whole bunch of other shit. Like, girl, it ain't even all that. And they were like, in Canada, they're like, we ain't trying to offend you. Y'all actually kind of favor each other. Like, she may be the younger version of you. So, I'm thinking, like, I don't look like her. Like, that girl's, you know, pretty. Like, it's, it's I don't look like that. So, in the interim, I was like, well, at least I said they don't have any pictures of themselves up on her Instagram. So, they were, my girlfriends was like, that's why we, we needed to meet with you. Because they were like, there is a picture out there. So, by this time, y'all, I'm devastated. So, our food tries to come. We have Papa Do's. Food comes. I'm so distraught from tears and looking a hot mess. Um, couldn't really even eat. And we went into how bad off I was. And you know you bad off when you can't do this. We needed to pray over our food. I couldn't even put my hands together to pray. I have never had that to happen. I couldn't even pray. I literally put my head down on the table while they were saying a prayer and cried. And basically they made me try to eat because I, I really could not eat anything. So it, it was just, um, it was just a complete mess. So when I get home, my husband, he was actually gone. I think he was gone, but you know, he claimed he had a trip or something. And then he tells me when he did come home, like, well, I need to talk to you because I think we need a little break. So he was like, you need a break so you can think about some things. And I was like, huh? Like, I need to think about some things. He was like, yeah, you need a break so you can think about some things. 
So yeah, to add insult to injury, he tells me he needs to go away for three to six months for me to think about some things and to think some things over. And I was like, I need to think some things over. I was like, I don't need to think about anything. He was like, yeah, I need to go away so you can think about some things. So I'm like, okay. And this is a straw that broke the camel's back when he said this. And I knew that this man actually had no love for me and that he had been planning and plotting for a long time. He was like, yeah, and if you find somebody in that three to six month um, time frame, I'll understand. Now, who tell their spouse that? If they really love you, they don't want you all sleeping with nobody else. Not if everything, everybody normal, ain't nobody sick or doing anything like that. So I knew then, I was like, I don't have but one other option. Divorce is the only option for me. And I tell you, I prayed about it, asked God about it. And when I tell you, he was sending me signs. If you listen, he will send you signs. And he sent me sign after sign after sign, y'all. So I did. I filed for divorce. And each day I've gotten stronger. And I think my husband thought that, I don't know what he thought about me or what kind of person I was, but he, cause he knew how I felt about infidelity. And I always used to tell, used to tell him, you know, Hey, if you, if something ever happens, tell me on the front end, cause I'm a hurt one way or the other on the front end, on the back end, just let me know, but don't play me for no fool. So he, I guess he thought he got boo boo the fool over here. So I was like, okay. And, and from this girl that um, you saw in the, in the video, yeah, she knew about me. He would have her at restaurants, hotels, games, um, had other women serving me my drinks. They'd feet under my table speaking to me. And he's sleeping with all these women. That is humiliating, y'all. So, you know what? I was like, if you give me shit to taste, I'm going to let you taste it back. So, to the airport video. Yeah, I was shocked. I was dismayed because that was my first time seeing them. I knew it eventually that I would see them out somewhere. It's Atlanta and hey, it's a small town. So it's a big town, but it's a small town too. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try my best to be classy and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes that just don't work because when you go in a gutter, when people go gutter with you and I have to apologize to Michelle Obama, girl, when you said that, when they go low, we go high. That ain't my motto, because when they go low, I go lower. I go gutter. I'm going gutter. I'm going to swim down with the rats with your ass. So I was like, okay, yeah. So she knew, and she was on Instagram sending all her little subliminal messages and all of that. Like, yeah, okay, I got you, girl. But y'all, when all this is over, I got a little story to tell about her and the rest of his story, too. Our story. It's actually our story, because it's my story to tell. So I'll share more with you all, but let me tell you something that's a cautionary tale. If you all want to move on, just say you want to move on, y'all. Because if you fuck around, you definitely going to find out. And just like him, my husband got the one and the two. Be good. Y'all hear from me later. Bye. How, how you like that?